20% increase. I always wanted a thing called tuna sashimi. Hi guys, Tuna back again. Uh, this time I'm going to do um, a hardware review on my favourite retro console, the PC Engine. Um, the model you see in front of you is a PC Engine Duo. This is the Japanese version. Uh, just a little thing, the PC Engine was um, released in Japan in 1987. Um, if I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, the original unit is about the size of three standard CD cases. If you put them on top of each other, that's pretty much the size of the original PC Engine. It was white, all very, very nice. It was the first 16-bit console released, um, utilising, well, it's a semi sort of 16-bit, but it, it is considered a 16-bit console. It uh, utilises a 8-bit processor with dual 16-bit graphics uh, cards. Uh, that's how they achieved, obviously, the 16-bit. Um, so the 8-bit processor when in these machines was very fast for its time, hence that it, it can throw a hell of a lot of stuff around screen. Um, it competed very well against the Mega Drive. In the majority of cases, the PC Engine versions are better, but uh, a, a lot of people will tell you otherwise. But um, I, I, I tried a lot of games out on both, for instance, like uh, Forgotten Worlds. Forgotten Worlds looks like the arcade version on the um, PC Engine, but the Mega Drive version is very cut down. Um, there's there's lots of other examples of that. But anyway, um, say this is the PC Engine Duo. Uh, or oh, also I want to mention as well, the PC Engine was the first console ever to have a CD-ROM in 1988. A lot of people think it was like the Amiga CD32, but it was 1988 in Japan. Uh, the PC Engine had a CD add-on. Uh, it came with an interface unit, which is basically, it was a bit like this, but you plugged your PC Engine in this side, and you plugged your CD-ROM in this side. Um, and if I can just stretch over here a second, guys, I can show you something interesting. Um, off of my duo, the CD-ROM was white to plug in the interface unit, and this one's a bit dusty, but basically, that is the CD-ROM unit um, that plugs in the uh, PC Engine itself. If you open this one up, which is it's basically like a... it's got like a spring thing. If you see inside mine, it's got a white CD tray. And that's because mine actually is the Japanese version inside a case for the American version to fit in my uh, Turbo Duo. So, but that that's what the CD-ROM looked like. It was pretty much like a Walkman, essentially. It's got could use it as a Walkman, but obviously it didn't take batteries. It's got your CD in, it's got your audio line out and everything. Uh, plays normal audio CDs. Um, mine's a little bit scratched, as you see. But I say these things are very rare these days to find in working condition, and this one works perfect. Touch. Uh, Touch wood or touch plastic, whichever one looking at. But that's what the CD-ROM looked like, and the original PC Engine is basically that size as well. So you had a, a white tip, white version of this, and you had a white version of the PC Engine at the side of it. I say that back in the day, that was my original PC Engine setup I had for years. Should have kept it really, but uh, there you go. So I'll move this to the side. Um, I say, well, then what they did then, they released quite a few versions of the PC Engine. You had the original PC Engine, the white one, then they released the Core Graphics, which is a slightly different, same machine, just different range, but it had an AV socket on the side, where the original white version just had um, your standard aerial socket, uh, which is no good to us because our TVs won't tune it in. Um, then they released the Core Graphics 2, which is slightly remodeling again of the original PC Engine. Um, and then they decided to release uh, a machine that incorporated the cartridge version and the CD version in one. And that machine was uh, this, the PC Engine Duo. Um, personally myself, I think the PC Engine Duo is a very nice looking console. Uh, as you can see, it's got the flap here, you've got your power button. You still only had one joypad port. Uh, you flip that up, and you've got your cartridge slot right here, and then, a bit hard to do this with the viewfinder. Um, when you click that button by there, 
you go to the CD-ROM, sits in there. If you notice, mine is missing the little plastic tray that goes around the CD lens. If anyone has got a spare one or a broken duo with a spare tray, I'd be really interested in that. But anyway, as I shut that down, you also got a lock, which is quite interesting. So you lock that and you, you can't open the CD drawer. Um, you can see it's quite a, a thin machine, which is cool. Look around your back, you basically got your... I don't know what these bits are for. I don't know whether... They're a bit strange. I don't know whether there's something clipped in it. Or, I don't know. But you had your standard power connector. And mine, if you notice, has got a lead at sight. Because... Uh, Mine's been RGB converted, um, and there's my uh, connection there. It's got an amp inside the scat lead as well, uh, which makes the picture quite a bit better. If you turn it to the side, you can see it has a headphone socket and audio, and it also has the AV out. Uh, I say this cable still works, but RGB is what you want. Um, I'll say a couple of things about this machine. Um, just move it back out of the way. A couple of things about this machine is the the Duo is a, a very nice looking console. Uh, they're well worth picking up. But if you are going to pick one up, I keep a few things in mind. Um, these things were made at the time when a lot of electronics, there was a, a batch of really uh, bad capacitors that went around. And it went around for years. TVs failed on it, video players, and the industry kept it quiet. And uh, what it was is the it was the electrolyte inside the capacitors. Uh, as far as I read, you know, apparently the recipe for that was stolen, and there was a lot of cheap Chinese capacitors flying around. And all the manufacturers bought these capacitors and put them in all sorts of electronics. So maybe you know, ten twenty years ago, you had electronics dying, you'd buy a new TV. That's because the manufacturers had deaf capacitors, and they kept it quiet. But you could actually demand. Um, refurbs and, and get them to fix it especially with PCs because um, uh, we were doing it work uh, the IBM PCs we had were 10 years old and the capacitors were going them and we were returning them to IBM and getting them to replace them because it was their fault um, but yes yeah, so you've got you to be a little bit careful because these ones tend to be the capacitors are knackered on them you'll find that uh, sometimes you get the sound quality is very low and um, it's crackling, and that's the sign that the, the sound capacitors are gone. The other thing can't be is the CD ROM will stop spinning. That's another thing is a problem. So, funny enough, I happen to have the lid unscrewed on this one. Reason being, uh, I'll explain in a minute. So, if I flip the lid off this, you can have a look on the inside. Right. So if you have a look on the inside, if I zoom in, what you see is I've uh, totally recapped this PC engine. As you can, if I try and get it to zoom in a bit, as you can see the capacitor right in front of you over there has all been changed. Uh, I've totally recapped everything on the inside of here. Uh, the sound capacitors are these ones by here. All around that heat sink. Um, these can find if you if you look at them, they they sort of bubble on the top. So you get um, they bow on the top, and then they start leaking, which destroys the board. But as you can see, I, all mine have been replaced. I've taken off all the original capacitors. There's a few underneath as well, uh, and I've replaced them all, which uh, pretty much fixes your problems. You can get all sorts of problems. Uh, the CD-ROM not spinning. I don't know whether you can see it properly by here but there's a capacitor by here one by here and there's these ones by here I'm sure there's another one somewhere and these ones by here what you find is the CD-ROM will stop spinning but if you actually replace these capacitors on this board the CD-ROM will start spinning again which is a, a very nice fix let me see if I can zoom it in a little bit better again as you can see the values on the capacitors, but you, you can get a value sheet if you go around. But yeah, I'd say I've totally recapped this one, uh, which is pretty much like brand it's like brand new again basically. The board on these original duos is a really high quality circuit board. Apparently it's supposed to be like a military spec board, uh, but the capacitors are shit. <coughs> What I've also done with this is underneath the board, I'm not going to lift it out to see it. Underneath the board, I've got my RGB, which 
basically underneath here you've got your underneath this section by here you've got your video chip and I've got everything running off the video chip into the SCART lead and inside the SCART lead then I've used um, a transistor amp running off the red green and blue um, which does is perfect does the job um, the, these machines do suffer from slight jail bars. If you don't know what that is, it means on really bright pictures, you can sometimes see sort of um, thick lines. I call them jail bars because they look like jail bars. But um, there is a fix for that. Is on the video chip. I can't remember. I think it's like pin 62 and 61. If you add uh, two capacitors to ground, uh, 220... Uh, microfarad capacitors to ground apparently that fixes the jail bars but to be honest I can't be bothered unscrewing it or taking it all apart and fixing it so I've left as it is um, yeah so what I also had to do is when I changed I got my CD-ROMs in it but I couldn't get it to pick up any discs so this is not only an RGB converter it's been fully recapped and I've changed the laser unit as well uh, when I changed the laser unit, I also had a problem with the new one. I couldn't get it to read CDs. So what I had to do then is, I don't know whether you can see it, if I can see them. See by here, with my fingers, and by here, and by here. And the little one by there. And there's another one around here somewhere. Uh, let's have a look if I can see them. Ah, yeah. There's one by there as well. They're little adjustable uh, resistors. And what you've got to do to tune that CD lens in, you've got to adjust all five resistors. There's one for speed, there's one for um, the... So you've got one for speed, you've got one for focus, you've got one for... Uh, I can't remember exactly, but there's five of them you need to change. Tuning that in without any... You can't do it by multimeter, because all, all machines are different. You can set the values by multimeter, as you may see in line, but you still won't get any issues with it. You still, you know, it still won't work. So what you've got to do is, you I found, if you go to the PC Engine FX forums, if you've got this problem, some guy wrote an amazing guide about uh, tuning the laser in by year and by looking at the speed of the disc. So what you do is you, he tells you which one to use. You tune in so that it looks like you get in, you know, constant speed, like a normal standard CD. And then you, you basically tune the others, the others in by listening to it and listen to the noise it makes. And I can't believe it. it. It works amazing. It literally took me five minutes to tune this laser in. And I just couldn't believe how, how amazing his little guide is like. But uh, yeah, I said, and the other thing I, I had, I don't know if I can lift it up, it does actually come up. Inside, right by there, you'll see, see that white thing with a screw hole? That's the um, power to the laser. Uh, what I also had to do is do some fine adjustments on that. With this unit, I've had to so add a little bit of extra power to the laser. But say so it takes a bit of playing around with it, but once you get it right, this machine just works perfect. So, say if you're going to buy a duo, I would make sure that it's been fully recapped because otherwise you are going to run into problems or you've got problems there already waiting for you as soon as you've done it. But, you know, the machines are definitely well worth owning. Um, if I was going to say, if I was going to suggest which PC engine to go for, um, I would go for a duo R, which if I pan over here, there's my duo R. It doesn't look as good. Uh, apparently the circuit board is on a, a bit of a cheaper circuit board, but they don't have the cap problems and they just work perfect so the duo r would probably be my if you get into pc engine would probably be my pickup doesn't look as nice but it's more probably the more reliable console but anyway let's go back to the pc engine itself um i'll see if i can get the top back on without uh breaking something which i wouldn't want Yeah. Maybe not. Hard work sometimes. Especially with one hand. Let me just put this down a minute so we can get the top on. Right, I'm back. Right, so we got the top on this now. Um 
that's the piece engine do so I'll show you a few other things uh, I've got a few cartridges here and stuff to give you an idea um, the games themselves came on credit size they're a little I suppose they're a little bit bigger credit size cartridges called Hue cards uh, as you can see they're very thin a class design uh, they can hold up to 20 megs uh, which is part of the Street Fighter one holds up to 20 megs uh, say this little fighting run uh, what these do these slot in there like that put your flat back down and uh, off you go you can play your games um, I did lots of little cartridges they always got pretty pretty uh, funky artwork on them um, i say these are not the best games in the world there you got the artwork on there. Tell you the other thing as well, if you're missing, they used, they came with plastic sleeves, these cartridges, and there is a guy in the US, you can find him on eBay, that does sell reproduction plastic sleeves, which are perfect. But if you want to do it the cheap way, trading card sleeves, these plastic ones, uh, they do a fine job. A uh, good thing about using them is as well, it stops the cartridges discolouring if they're in light. Um... So they they're only they're literally like two pound for a pack of hundred. That's a, a cheap way of put, having a, some sort of cover on to give me a little bit of protection. Um, like I say, yeah, the cartridges go in like so. Um, the good thing about the duo is it, the what well, the PC Engine did when they first came out, you had to have a system card for the CDs, and that was it was like the amount of RAM on the card, and it gives like certain programs. The original version of the CD came with system card uh, one point zero. Um. Which is okay, but it doesn't play the Super System games. Uh, also, if you've got Altered Beast, you need to have System Card 1.0 to play. Because it literally will crash. It'll get so far and just crash. The same with Bonanza Brothers, apparently. But they're the only two I know of. Uh, and then what NEC did then, they released subsequent System Cards. They did System Card 2.0, 2.1. Uh, the Super Systems card, which uh, ran the Super System games. Uh, which the Duo has a Super System Cards 3.0 built into the machine. So you don't need a Super System card this. It's already actually built in. If you take a card, if you take that out, uh, you open your CD-ROM in, you know, check your, check your CD-ROM game in there, you know, there's a game there, you got Dungeon Explorer 2. You check your CD-ROM game in there, and off you go, you know, play play anything. The other thing to note as well is the CD part of these machines is region free. And so this is a Japanese machine and this is the American version of uh, Dungeon Explorer 2. Uh, the cartridge slot bit isn't though, that will only play Japanese unless you get it modded. Uh, but the CD will play any CDs from all around the world. Yeah, so uh, that's what they did with that. They say the system card's built into that, but they did release one more system card, which is called the arcade card. And what that gave you was 17, I think it was 17 meg of RAM on the actual card. Um, I do have one here to show you. Uh, I do have one here to show you. I can see it's a pretty, it's a pretty weighty card compared to the rest of them. Uh, it looks a bit cheap with the sticker on it more than the actual uh, proper printed but apparently that's how they all came um, you pop this one into the machine it doesn't actually tell you any different to the menu you get when it's originally on you pop it in and what that will allow you to do then is run the um, the arcade card games I'm not sure I think I think there was about 10 or 12 games released something like that but what it also did was, copy, was um, versions of Neo Geo games uh, hence if I look right here you got Fate 32, uses the arcade card, and I don't know if you can see the back of that properly. And it's a copy of Fate 32. And I have to say, for a 16 bit machine that was released in 1987, these these conversions with this arcade card are pretty amazing. World Heroes is pretty stunning, so is Art of Fighting. And uh, Fatal Fury, they, they're much better than the SNES and the Mega Drive versions, and they got proper CD soundtracks as well. Uh, as you can see, there's the CD. Um, they're well impressive versions, considering. They're not as good as a Neo Geo, but, you know, considering it's not a Neo Geo, uh, they, they're very good. So, I'll have to do a couple of videos on some of the arcade cards. 
arcade card games I've got, just to show you some of the differences. Um, but yeah, that also allows you to play. Um, oh, what's that shoot 'em up called? Uh, oh, I can't remember the name. You know, there's a shoot 'em up on the machine. Uh, oh, sorry, Jenky something Sapphire. Um, I prefer to go scroll and shoot them up. It's pretty nice. It's not amazing. Uh, but it's pretty nice. Everyone raves about it, and it's really damn expensive. You're talking like five hundred quid for an original. But there's a lot of copies flying around. Um, but it's it's not worth the money. I gotta say. The other conversion they did on you was um, Strider. Uh, if you have a read around the net, uh, if you have a read around the forums, a lot of people swear by the PC Engine version of Strider. And I've got to say, shit, it's terrible. If you if you like Stride of the Arcade and you like the Mega Drive version, which is a pretty damn conversion of the Arcade, the PC Engine version of Strider, to me, just seems really unfinished. It's terrible. And it's got, I know it's got some animation, and it's got an extra level, and it uses the Arcade card, and it's got more, you know, it's got more frames of animation than the Mega Drive version. But it's terrible. It doesn't, it doesn't play like Strider. It's terrible scrolling on it. I have no idea why everyone swears by that game. It's fucking terrible. It's really bad. But everyone says, no, no, it's better, much better than the Meg Drive version. Well, take it from me, it's not. Uh, I love Strider. Coming from a guy who used to own the arcade board as well. And, no, a PC Engine version of Strider's crap. And it, it's, it can be about 50, 60 quid, and it's certainly not worth the money. But, um,. Yeah, that's the PC Engine doing. I say, you know, it came with the PC Engine got quite a lot of games, as you can see. That's Mac and Maze. Um, pretty cool little uh, shoot 'em up like Maze game. And problem is when you get hit, you go flying back for ages, which is a bit annoying. Um, things like Override, just shoot 'em up. These are all cartridge games. Then, you know, the original CD ROM, you had uh, Pomp and Mode, which is Pang. Uh, this, require, this will work on the old um, CD cards. But they all, also the old CD card games are all compatible with the new CD cards. I say apart from Altered Beast and um, Bonanza Brewers. So you could use this with a Super Systems card. Um, so your games like that, whatever. Great, yes. Um, so yeah, so that's the uh, that's the PC Engine. And I would say, you know, if you if you're looking to get into PC Engine. And uh, let me just focus. If you can get into PC Engine, and you're looking where to go. I would I probably suggest either buying a, a Duo that's recapped. I guess if a Duo R uh, gives you lots of opportunities. Um, it pretty much you you can play pretty much all the CD games out there. You can play pretty much all the Japanese uh, cards out there. Uh, and if you get yourself uh, an arcade card, you can play all the arcade card games as well. Say so personally, you know, the PC Engine myself is my favourite retro console. Um, I would rather own this than a Neo Geo, and which comes number two. Uh, only reason for that is the Neo Geo obviously is graphically better and everything, but you've got a lot more diverse choice with the PC Engine. You've got you know your arcade games, you've got some Neo Geo conversions. As my phone's ringing, uh, let me take this phone off a minute. One second. Is here my Neo Geo phone too. But uh, yeah, if you're looking to get into PC Engine, um, I would well suggest you know picking up a Duo or a Duo R. But just make sure if you get a Duo, it's fully recapped. Machines are getting a little bit pricey these days. You, you can pick them up sometimes on eBay for about 120 from Japan, but then you have to pay postage, and then you have to pay import duty. Um, so there's a company called Jenky Games who are uh, very helpful and um, they do charge on consoles a little bit extra but if when you work out the duty and the um, the postage it's pretty much about the same and you could get it next day which is class and also they're very good if you've got any problems on the machine they will uh, give you a refund as well which is really good which is well handy with a duo because uh, before I bought this one I bought one off eBay who guy said it was in perfect nick and you put it on for about 20 minutes and then the sound would be all over the place so the caps were going on that and the money I paid for it I wasn't uh, willing to do a recap for it so I, I sent it back basically but anyway so yeah that's my uh, favourite retro console the PC Engine uh, definitely well worth picking up and I'll, I'll do some videos of the arcade card games and chuck on so um, happy days guys get yourself a PC Engine you won't regret it catch you again
Sorry guys, before I uh, end this video, I just forgot to mention, I just remembered, uh, the joypads. Uh, the PC Engine, uh, like I said, came with one joypad board like this one, and it uses like this little mini connection, which looks pretty much like a PS2 connection on a PC. Uh, but the, the joypads look like this. As you can see, you got a nice little design on them. Um, you got a little joypad but there. you got your auto fires but there. And there, and you have two buttons. Uh, it comes in lots of different flavors, different versions of the PC Engine. They ended up having different joy pads. And if I come over here, this version of the pad is the Turbo Duo pad. This is the pad that came with the American version of the uh, PC Engine uh, Duo. Uh, it's pretty much the same pad, except it's got the uh, Turbo Graphics 16 logo by here. Um, comes with the same connector, same size, but you want to be careful, the original Turbo 16, uh, Turbo Graphics 16 pads have a, a much bigger end on them, they come with quite a chunky end, for some reason Americans they want to do the big, hence why the Turbo Graphics 16 is such a big machine, uh, they came with different joy pads, but uh, when the Duo came out in America, there wasn't enough room to fit your standard socket which is like twice the size of this so they went back to the american uh, setup so uh, you can use american pads on the japanese duo but as long as you've got the small jackpug uh, connector ones not the uh, the extra large ones same with the uh, turbo taps which you can have five players on the pc engine using the turbo tap um, same with that as well the original turbograph 16 i'd one with five big connectors, and then they re-released another one then to work with the, which these connectors, um, which will work with the Japanese ones as well. I haven't got one of them, unfortunately. I do need to get one. Uh, the only other one I've got is a two-player adapter, which is not an official one. It's an XHE. Not sure I made this. So made in Japan. These don't work with my joypad converters for some reason, but yeah, it's a two-player multi-tap. Uh, it's got a small end. I'm pretty assuming this will work on the American machine as well. But yeah, there's lots of different joypads for the PC Engine. So yeah, that's the American joypad and the Engine joypad. I say that's what the joypads look like. Um, there was a joypad they released for three buttons, and there was a six-button uh, avenue pad as well. And uh, I'm quite sure Hori made a six button pad and a, a six button joystick as well, which uh, are very hard to get hold of. Uh, I wouldn't mind one myself. But yeah, that's the PC Engine pads. Um, so that's it, guys. That's the end of my video. Uh, definitely get yourself a PC Engine. It's the only way. Bye bye.